About three months after the United States entered World War II, F.D. Roosevelt signed an executive order. This order was authorized by the Secretary of War and the Armed Forces to get rid of people of a Japanese ancestry from what they designated as military areas and surrounding communities. These areas were legally off-limits to Japanese aliens and Japanese American citizens. The order was set and relocated more than 120,000 Japanese citizens to detention camps around the West Coast. Two-thirds of these citizens were Americans. According to the military, they transported them to many sites, including Washington, Idaho, Utah, and Arizona State. The Supreme Court ruled 6-3 to three to uphold President Roosevelt's executive order, which validated Korematsu's arrest. Justice Black of the majority wrote that the executive order didn't show racial discrimination and that the purpose was to protect the West Coast from Japanese invasion and spying. He also believed that the need to protect against espionage outweighed the rights of American citizens with Japanese descent. Justice Frankfurter said that the need for the executive order was a necessity arising from the danger of espionage and sabotage to protect the United States during World War II. The majority justices used the case Hirabayashi v. United States from a year prior to base their opinions on. It upheld the institution of curfews against certain groups of people while America was at war with the country of their racial or ethnic background, but it wasn't about race. Justice Murphy, who dissented, said that the exclusion of Japanese people falls into the ugly abyss of racism and mirrors the aberrant and despicable treatment of minority groups by the dictatorial tyrannies which this nation is now pledged to destroy. He also said, I dissent, therefore, from this legalization of racism. Racial discrimination in any form and in any degree has no justifiable part whatever in our democratic way of life. It is utterly revolting among a free people who have embraced the principles set forth in the Constitution of the United States. Justice Jackson, who also dissented, said that Korematsu has been convicted of an act not commonly a crime. It consists of merely being present in the state whereof he is a citizen and where all his life he has lived. The impact of the Supreme Court's decision was that the evacuation order Kiramatsu defied was still valid and the Japanese Americans still had to go to the relocation camps, Kuramatsu included. The Supreme Court decided that this did not abuse the power of the Constitution or the wartime powers of Congress due to the threat of sabotage and espionage, despite the argument of Justice Jackson, who argued that the order legitimized racism that violated the 14th Amendment's Equal Protection Clause. Because of this, the camps remained active until President Franklin D. Roosevelt rescinded the order in 1942. After the original case in 1983, Korematsu challenged his conviction by saying the original decision was flawed. He submitted the conclusions of the CCWRIC report in the Internal Justice Department communications, contradicting the necessity of Executive Order 9066, which had been withheld from the Supreme Court as evidence. Korematsu's conviction was voided. It wasn't until 2011 that it was admitted that the Supreme Court's original decision was in fact wrong. Because of the unfairness and racial injustice that took place, this case cannot be used as a precedent for current court cases. In the first analogous case, Hirabayashi v. U.S., Hirabayashi said that the president's executive orders and the power delegated to the military authorities discriminate against Americans and resident aliens of Japanese descent in violation of the Fifth Amendment. The court found that the president's orders are constitutional. In the second analogous case, Reservoir v. U.S., four British and Australian citizens were captured and, and when their families found out, they filed a writ of habeas corpus that would declare the detention unconstitutional. The court ruled unconstitutional, saying that the habeas corpus can be exercised in all dominions under sovereign control. In conclusion, the case ruling of Korematsu v. U.S. ties into Hirabayashi and Razul because they were all saying that the case was discrimination and the court ruling of Korematsu influenced the outcome of these cases.